How's it going everybody? It is a dreary Sunday out in New York City and today I wanted to riff on some thoughts, things that I kind of left out over the past videos talking about Antifa and political violence. Just get a little bit more into the opinion of things. The first thing that I want to talk about is this concept of the false equivalence by the media about Antifa. So as much as we keep having the discussion that the media ignores or played cover for Antifa, People on the far left only seem to see the media condemning Antifa, which is, which is strange. But there is this phenomenon of people in their bubbles. And as I explained in my video about Patreon, when Patreon removed Lauren Southern, they got a ton of criticism from the far right saying that Patreon was biased and was targeting conservatives. But when they removed It's Going Down, the far left media site, they got the same exact criticism from the far left that Patreon was playing sides and, and taking, you know, being pressured by the alt-right to support them. Even though Patreon took down two, two accounts that are considered left and right, they received the same criticism. So I see a lot of people who are now really, really upset on the far left. The media has finally been calling out Antifa violence. But the one thing we have not seen is anyone address the condemnation of Donald Trump when he said violence on many sides. When, he did, when, when Donald Trump gave that press conference following Charlottesville, he said there was violence on many sides and got a ton of criticism for it. I knew the moment he said it, I was like, here we go. I, I know exactly what the media is going to do. Oftentimes, the media is so hell-bent on countering Trump that they'll call him out for literally anything, even if they are wrong. Charlottesville was a ridiculously, just ridiculously bad moment for America. You had white nationalists, you had several neo-Nazis, and you had a man take a car and crash into a ton of people. And we all criticized it. Trump condemned it. Uh, most of the media condemned it. But a lot of the pundits and the, the, the opinion people attacked Trump for trying to draw an equivalence between the counter-protesters and the, and the neo-Nazis or, or the, the, the white nationalists group, whatever you want to call them. But now that we're seeing Department of Homeland Security formally classifying Antifa as domestic terrorist violence, where are these pundits? Where are these outlets? The, the argument is that, oh, well, they're not as bad as neo-Nazis, right? It's a false equivalence. Saying that Antifa is not as bad as neo-Nazis is a horrible argument, right? Because we know that neo-Nazis are really, really bad. And we know that Antifa is bad. Simply because Antifa isn't the worst doesn't mean they aren't bad. Yes, they're bad. They beat innocent people. They beat bystanders. We get it. So here's what you do whenever you hear this argument. If someone brings up Antifa violence and says, but they're not as bad as neo-Nazis, just show them videos of the bike lock basher. Show the video of the, the old man in the wheelchair being splashed with water. And just say, yeah, you're totally right. Now look how awful they still are. Another important concept that needs to be brought up in this whole, you know, sort of wrapping up this, this, this thread for the past week is the idea of sides, who's on whose side, right? I've been criticized pretty heavily from people in the alt-right for my condemnation of many of their activities, and I've been heavily criticized people on the left for condemning Antifa. Surprise, surprise. People don't really care about their politics. They're tribalist. And as long as their side is winning, they're content. So there are a lot of people associated with the far left that are shocked, shocked to discover that I would be criticizing Antifa, you know, having come from covering Occupy Wall Street and many of these far-left protests, even though I have said, in no uncertain terms, time and time again, I am not on your side, I am not on anyone's side, and rest assured, the moment you do something, I will tell people it happened, right? I believe in confidentiality, right? I have sources, confidential sources. I don't, you know, I don't go around spreading their information. I take trust very seriously. But if I'm out with a group of people and they do something, we're going to talk about it. It happened. So it was really convenient for the far left and groups like Occupy Wall Street when they were out doing their own thing and the police violated their rights. Take, for instance, the moment when Tony Baloney, Anthony Bologna, the, the cop in New York, pepper sprayed the four women who were just standing on the sidewalk doing nothing. That is a violation of their rights. It is a violation of, of their free speech, and it was wrong. So that video went viral. I think most of us agreed with that. As much as we might disagree with the group's politics, most of us think free speech is a good thing, it's an important thing, and that a police officer pepper spraying four people for no reason is really, really bad. So naturally, I'm going to cover that. I saw many things during Occupy Wall Street and throughout many years where I'm like, wow, the police instigated that. There was a moment during Ferguson 
where the protesters were out in the street and they were dancing and playing music, and an officer walked up and chucked a flashbang grenade into the crowd, which shocked the hell out of a lot of us, most of the journalists, just wondering why the hell the cops just provoked this, this rioting. And that's what happened. And that's what was reported. In fact, I made a documentary about Ferguson and about the racism, because it happens. But what happens then when we see violent groups like Antifa going around bashing people with bike locks? I report that too. And what happens when I'm on the ground in Berkeley watching people throw explosives into the crowds? Guess what? I call that out. But here's one of the biggest issues, and, and this, can, this, this video can serve as kind of like a, a, my thoughts on just doing news in general. People don't watch my videos. I've said this before, they don't watch it. They get mad at me for news other people report, right? I tweeted out the Politico link that the, the Department of Homeland Security has classified Antifa as terrorist violence, and people got mad at me for tweeting it out as if we shouldn't talk about the news. Even if you support or oppose, like no matter what, if you support or oppose Antifa, wouldn't you want to know that DHS has been investigating them? But it doesn't matter. Why? People are tribalist. They don't like negative talk, even if it's true, regardless of who said it, we're gonna blame the messenger. So it's interesting. During Occupy Wall Street, while I was live streaming a lot of these protests, I would get a bunch of conservatives in the chat on the live stream attacking me, saying things like, oh, the left are idiots, liberals are, you know, liberalism is a mental illness, things like that. And a bunch of the far lefties said, Tim, you need to delete these trolls. And I said, hell no. If they wanna come here and criticize the movement, they have every single right to do so. All of a sudden now, I saw a ton of conservatives say, I really respect that. And I said, by all means, come into the chat, say whatever the hell you want. You're allowed to, okay? Criticize, insult, whatever. That's free speech. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna shut you up. Let's have, you know, have a real conversation. If people get upset by that, there's nothing I can do about it. So what people don't seem to understand when they make the claims that I'm chasing the money, that I'm taking the side of whoever is going to pay me, even though I said Paul Joseph Watson was wrong about Sweden, they say the same thing about Dave Rubin. But what they don't understand is that funding is actually an inverse effect. If I make a statement that someone else agrees with, they're more likely to donate to me, not the other way around. I can't target groups of people and say, hey guys, I'm going to say an opinion that you agree with, so you give me money. It doesn't work like that. I don't know the political opinions of the people who follow me. So I get some people who donate to me, and then a month or two later they say, wow, Tim, you're a cuck, and they suspend their, their donations. Some people say, oh my god, Tim, you're so far right now. They suspend their donations. One of the biggest problems about doing news on a, on a funding, fundraising model, as opposed to, say, an advertising model or a paywall model, is that people get mad if you don't say things they want to hear. Take the ACLU, for instance. They got a ton of support from, from so many in the far left when they fought against the travel ban. But what happens when they uphold their values and defend the right of Unite the Right to have its event in Charlottesville? So many people got angry and threatened to cancel their donations. And this is where we get to see the true integrity of the ACLU because their response was not to stand firm and say, hey, this is about what's right. No, they capitulated and started posting a ton of progressive talking points and apologizing. And even after they posted a photo of it was just a kid with a free speech shirt and everyone got offended because it was a white kid, they posted some meme essentially apologizing for it. And that's not integrity. That is bending to the will of your donors. So I would say when I look at the ACLU, they have no integrity because they're just gonna say whatever they think they need to say to get paid. Well, I'm not gonna do that. I'll call out anybody so far as they need to be called out. I uphold my values and no one else's, and I am on no one's side, so don't you forget it. If you look at the content I produce, there is a through line. Freedom of information has, has been the only thing I've ever been activisty about. I think the most activisty I've been is in my last video when I said that Google is growing too powerful and it's gonna start censoring people. Because coming from the hacker world, freedom of information is absolutely paramount. If we want to have an open and free society, if we want to progress, we can't be scared to share ideas. How will we develop new technologies, new concepts, if we can't talk about certain ideas that are offensive? So to look back, go back in time, and we look at Occupy Wall Street and how I covered that, sure, I'm, I'm sure my opinions have changed a little bit. I, I think if you don't change, something's wrong with you. People change over time. But the one thing that I've always held true is that we need to be able to share this information. When I saw the police attacking protesters, I say, hey, they, they shouldn't be doing that. But at the same time, even during Occupy Wall Street, when I saw these masked individuals deflating police tires, I filmed that too. Why? It's happening in public and the people have a right to know what you're doing and why you're doing it. Today, these same people on the far left now oppose free speech. 
Sure, they say they're for free speech, but they believe that hate speech is not free. And as the Supreme Court has ruled numerous times, yes it is. And I'm for the free exchange of ideas. Violence is bad, intimidation is bad, coercion is bad. The use of force against an individual to force your idea is not, is not okay. Unfortunately, it's really, really easy. And when we look at Antifa, the reason why I think this is so important to talk about is that they, they say that their stated goal is to make it so terrifying to be a Nazi that people won't do it. But let's think about that for a moment. These are the people that will call anyone a Nazi. Yes, anyone. I mean, there's jokes about it. Chris Reagan made that song, Punch a Nazi, where he jokes about how they call everyone a Nazi. So what does that really mean? If we look at their actions and not their words, we know that by Nazi they mean anybody who is to the right of them. They believe they're moderate. So their actual goal is to make it terrifying not to be associated with the far left, not to align with their views. And that is really, really bad. When, this, when these far-right attacks happen, when the neo-Nazi stuff happens, when these people shoot the mosque or the churches, yeah, we all condemn it. We all talk about it. I talk about it for sure. But how often has Antifa been in the news lately? A lot. Why? They're instigating violence at lawful events. And that's not okay. And if their stated goal is to oppress people, make it terrifying to be to the right of them, that is not okay. And they are bad. Are they as bad as neo-Nazis? No, for sure. But there's not that many neo-Nazis, and the neo-Nazis aren't showing up to lawful events and attacking people. It's the other way around. So there is an issue with a group of people who would wear masks and go and beat innocent people. And surprise, surprise, I'm not a tribalist. So that means I don't care who you are, I'm not going to defend your actions if you violate certain principles. So for those that might be following, if you're liberal, conservative, don't think that I'm on your side. Seriously, don't. Because I've said it time and time again, I am on no one's side and I will report what needs to be reported, and I will call out bad behavior that violates freedoms, expression, and people's rights, no matter where I see it. But let me know what you think. Does that piss you off? How do you feel about freedom of expression? Let's talk about the false equivalence of comparing Nazis to Antifa. Just because Nazis are bad doesn't mean Antifa is not bad, right? The equivalence doesn't matter. If you like the video, click the like button. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at TimCast. If you want to support my work, make sure you go to TimCast.com forward slash donate. Give whatever you'd like or give nothing at all. My videos are always free and available. I've added some new options for cryptocurrencies, Ethereum, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, all on my website. Thank you all so much for watching and to all my supporters, I seriously appreciate it. Stay tuned, new videos every day at four and periodic live streams. I'll see you then.